for the interests of, of my sanity, I'm going to say CPE rather than carbapenemase producing enterobacteriaceae for the most of this talk, which should decrease the length of the talk considerably. Um, and what, I'm, what I've tried to do is that I was asked to talk on what does this mean, and for me that's, well, what does the term mean? Let's, let's make sure we're all talking about the same thing. Um, what does it mean to the world from a global perspective? What does it mean on a, an organisational perspective and for you as people working in NHS organisations? And then what does it mean to an individual patient? And I'll try and do all that in 15 minutes. So I'm going to start off with two quotes. The first one is from William H. Stewart. So this was the Surgeon General um, of the US, as opposed to William G. Stewart, who presented 15 to 1. So entirely different people. So separated by 46 years. And the first one says, the war against infectious diseases has been won. He, for obvious reasons, if you look in, certainly on any internet search, denied this, denied that he ever said this, but it's, it's very well quoted. Um, 46 years later, UK, Dame Sally Davis, Chief Medical Officer says, the apocalyptic scenario is that when I need a new hip in 20 years, I'll die from a routine infection because we've run out of antibiotics. So we've gone from the problem sorted to we're right back at square one and there's nothing we can do, certainly not in terms of antimicrobial therapy. And in many respects, the most obvious candidate for the organisms that she's talking about there are CPE. Because never mind 20 years, We've almost arrived at that point now. So let's start with the basics. What is CPE? So I will say the word Enterobacteriaceae. It's the Greek for gut bacteria. They're groups of organisms that are carried by absolutely every one of us in these audience. Your gut is stuffed full of these. And that's the normal case. That's as it should be. They help with digestion. They produce vitamins. Uh, they're a good thing to have there. Includes things that you'll he have heard of, such as E. coli, Klebsiella, but there's also there's a whole list of 30 or 40 different organisms within this group, um, and they can cause infection. So normally, if they're in your guts, they don't do any harm. If they get into the wrong place, they can cause problems. Most common cause of UTI, would, if you're in retract infection, would be E. coli. Um, if you were to rupture your appendix and these things get into the wrong place, again, they'll set up infection and they can cause sepsis. Big cause of infections generally within both the community and within hospitals. So what's a carbapenemase? What's the C of CPE? Um, so a carbapenemase is an enzyme that's produced by bacteria which breaks down all of the antibiotics that are derived from penicillin. And you might think, well, how much of a problem is that? Well, if you were to look in the hospital that I work in, which is probably fairly representative, um, about half of all the antibiotics that we prescribed are derived from penicillin. So in one fell swoop, you've taken all of those out of the equation with these organisms. Um, never mind in the community where these antibiotics are also used. The DNA that codes for these enzymes can flip between different bacteria. So it c the, not only can the organism spread, but the mechanism of resistance can spread between different organisms. So there's a sort of slightly different paradigm to some other organisms. And just to complete the picture, these organisms are often resistant to lots of other antibiotics. So not only do we take out that 50% of antibiotics that we're prescribing, but we might take out other, quite considerable other chunks of our antibiotic prescribing as well. I'm not going to be testing you on any of this later, but just to point out that there's a lot of these different enzymes about there. This is not one specific thing that we're dealing with. This is, is by no means a comprehensive list, but there, there are 30, 40 different types of carbapenemase. Some of them are very commonly found, some of them less so. And there's about five that have been shown to, to have international spread. And they're throughout those different, different classes of enzymes. And the reason that the classes are important are because that there are different therapeutic options for organisms carrying um, carbapenemases within those different classes. So we've heard just about MRSA, we've heard about C. diff, so what's different about CPE? Why is this a concern? And we've done brilliantly, as we've just heard, with MRSA and C. diff. Why aren't we going to do brilliantly with CPE? Uh, well, it's different in, in, in just sort of some fundamental levels. So I've already shown you that Enterobacteriaceae are a massively diverse group of organisms. So it's a diverse group of organisms. They're related to each other. And they carry a range of different resistance mechanisms. So you've got two different variations in there already, and you can, you can obviously multiply the two together. 
So it's a really, really heterogeneous group. So there are differences in there amongst the epidemiology. Um, if you were to look at where these different organisms appear across the world, some are common in America, some are common in India, some are common in the Middle East. Very, very different across the world. If you were to think about treatment, as I've said, the treatment options may be determined by the enzyme that's carried. So different enzyme, different treatment. Our ability to detect them is different, is uh, difficult because of this heterogeneity. Um, so different culture methods will have greater sensitivity for different organisms. So you might need to know what you're looking for or at least know the, uh, the downsides and limitations of your detection techniques. Some of the organisms survive better in the environment than others. So if we're thinking about hospital infection control, again, we might need to think about different strategies for different organisms. If we compare that to MRSA, MRSA is one species of bacteria with predominantly, 90 odd percent, one mechanism of resistance. So it's a very, very different paradigm that we might have to get into when we're thinking about how we deal with these organisms from a diagnostic, a therapeutic, an infection control sort of strategy. And I think that might lead to some of the difficulties that we experience. What does it mean in terms of what we've seen across, across the world? Well, this, this is a series of slides, a series of maps of Europe, um, geographically as opposed to politically now, sort of post-Brexit. Um, so, and what they show is that really the rate of carbapenem resistance, and it goes from very little in dark green through light green, yellow, red, and then dark red, as we grow up, the greater, uh, the greater proportion of resistance that's seen. And there's two things that I think that, that you can see, or a number of things maybe that you can see on these. One is if you look at Italy in those first, first two slides. So Italy's gone from light green to red. So hardly any at all in the three year period to considerable amounts. Very, very dramatic. Similarly, if we look across as a whole, you'll notice that certainly going from 2008 to 2014, the number of countries that are now light green as opposed to dark green, so maybe just starting to teeter upwards in terms of their prevalence of resistance, is increasing. So although these organisms are mainly centered in Greece uh, and Italy currently, there's certainly uh, the beginnings of spread within the rest of Europe. And you might sit and think, well, okay, Greece, Italy, I'd kind of expect resistance there, and you know, maybe they, they, they would have more difficulty controlling it, but let's give you an example. So one of those enzymes that I talked about before, Klebsiella pneumoniae carbapenemase, KPC, first described from an isolate in 1996, 20 years ago, so these have been around for a long, long time. Identified in the US and disseminated incredibly rapidly across the eastern seaboard. So if you looked, there's one paper published that shows a 220-fold increase in the rate of resistance to carbapenems in Klebsiella pneumoniae in New York in a seven-year period. So whilst we might have thought, okay, Greece, um, Italy, you know, I can, I can picture while, while they would have problems controlling things, this is the world's best resourced healthcare economy that absolutely failed to control the spread of these organisms. They are seen, KPC seen in a lot of other countries, and Israel went to the extent of having a national program, and I think it's something that a healthcare system like Israel was probably better suited than ours to do. But they, they took it that seriously. This was a government directive viewed from a Department of Health kind of level. What does it look like in the UK? These are isolates that referred to the central reference laboratory in the UK that were confirmed as carrying a carbapenemase. And you can see up until about 2008, 2009, very little seen in the UK, and since then, pretty well an exponential rate of increase. The different colors in the different bars all represent different enzymes. So I think although you can see that, that KPC, which is the pink, predominated, it's being caught up by lots of other enzymes. Again, emphasizing that this is a very heterogeneous position. And it's now a UK problem as well. That's all very well talking about things from a national and international perspective, um, but what's it look like if you're an individual patient? So what are your therapeutic options if you're looking, if you're an individual patient infected with one of these organisms? And I'll give you the caveat, this is an extreme situation, but this is a report on an isolate from a patient in our hospital that we sent to the National Reference Laboratory, and this is what we got back. So list of antibiotics, list of the 
MICs, which is the, the amount of antibiotic it takes to stop the organism growing, and then a list of letters, which is sensitive, intermediate, or resistant. So sensitive, the bug's going to respond. Resistant, you give the antibiotic, it isn't going to touch the bacterium. And the last line is just a list for reference of the points at which you transfer from sensitive to becoming resistant. So we've talked, there's been a lot of talk on the telly recently about, uh, and in the media, about colistin and colistin resistance, transferable colistin resistance only just discovered. Transferable resistance is, but colistin resistance happens out there all along on a regular basis. This organism was resistant to colistin. It's been quoted on the, on the TV and in the media as our very last line antibiotic. So this one, we didn't have that as an option to start with. There are only two antibiotics on there to which this organism is susceptible. Uh, so two antibiotics which if we gave to the patient, hopefully the patient would respond. And those are gentamicin and tigacycline. Tigacycline is not an appropriate antibiotic to give certainly on its own in sepsis. Uh, and gentamicin, although it is, it doesn't penetrate all the tissues that you might want it to, and it's a toxic antibiotic. Um, so neither of those are particularly great choices, but they're the only two that we've got. And if you compare the first column of numbers with the next column of numbers, you'll see that for both those antibiotics, the, the MIC, so the concentration at which the antibiotic stops the bug growing, is the same as the breakpoint. So that's the point at which the organism no longer responds. So both of these antibiotics are one step away from becoming resistant uh, in this organism. So effectively, it's two steps away from becoming resistant to everything. Just two last things. So my view at the moment is that most UK hospitals haven't got major problems with CPE. So the thing you've got to do is stop yourself getting a major problem with CPE. And the way to do that is to recognize patients coming in through the door who've got these organisms. There's the UK guidance published in 2013, um, which the, the so-called toolkit. I'm not going to take you through this algorithm. But the most important bit is it says, as part of the routine admission procedure, assess all patients on admission for CPE status. Do you do that in your organization? Does every patient coming through the door get asked a question to determine their status for CPE? Because if they don't, you might be letting these organisms into, into your hospital. There's then a series of, guide, a series of steps to take in terms, of, in terms of what you do with those patients once they're identified and once they're admitted to your hospital. Just to summarize, uh, CPE is, it refers to, it's a group of organisms, it's not a single organism. Uh, they're resistant to all the beta-lactam antibiotics and many others. Um, once you've got an established problem, I think as has been demonstrated, it's incredibly hard to control. So the main point at the moment is for most UK hospitals, don't let yourself get an established problem. Don't let the organism in through your front door without you knowing about it. The one thing I'd suggest is don't put your head in the sand because they're on their way. Thank you very much. Thank you.